In the last lecture, we discussed about the uh, equivalent application of broadband to a narrow band approach. So, one methodology which people suggested in the Ester literature is that use equivalent narrow band approach to handle the wide banded spectrum. The other alternative is use directly the broadband with the help of rain flow count method. In that case, the probability density function of the stress range can be given by. So, now we are not converting the wide band to an equal and narrow band, we are directly handling the wide band using a rain flow count method. This is given by d 1 by q e to the power of minus z by q plus d 2 z by r square e to the power of minus z square by 2 r square plus T 3 z these are all z this is z d 3 z e to the power of minus z square by, by two m naught. where beta used in this expression ok this equation I will call this equation number 1 for this lecture beta is nothing but T c by T z substituting for T z and T z I can say this is m 2 square by m 0 m 4 is that ok. Of course, x is T c by T z sorry T c by T m which is m 1 by m naught root of m 2 by m 4 and z is the stress range by 2 m naught and d 1 d 2 1 minus beta
I call all these equations as total equation 2. You can see here this expression is the stress range of the probability distribution function where it is done by directly rain follow count method that the effective fatigue stress range sigma <coughs> EFR that sigma EFR is given by an expression the stress strength to the power m probability density function of sigma r dr. We already know this. Instead of this, now instead of probability density function of sigma r, substitute probability density function of sigma r that is rain flow count. So, equation 2 will give you the probability density function of sigma rain flow. So, I should say here let us write like this probability density function of the rain flow of sigma. Which equation 2 will give you this, which we just now wrote. So, now for n equals t by t z, in my case is going to be T c, we are talking about the time period between the crests or the troughs, damage can be estimated as by this equation where damage is given by T by C T C 1 by A of integral of sigma r to the power m instead of this I use rain flow stress range T sigma. This should be also D sigma that is the variable. So, call the equation number 4. So, you can easily find the damage estimate for a broadband spectrum as it is. Let us look at the summary of the fatigue damage for broadband and uh, using correction factors or directly using the wide band. This is summary of the broad band fatigue damage. So, obtain a general function probability density function of sigma r for the broadband that is without considering sigma EFR for equivalent narrow band directly find out this. So, there will be one stress range for each peak for each peak there is one stress range for each, each peak in the given response. So, that the stress range in T will be T by T c. that is why we have multiplier here T by T c. 
So, the damage D is given by T by T C 1 by A sigma R m that is the stress range the probability density function of the rain flow directly for the sigma R D sigma. You can easily find the damage like this. Let us quickly talk about the stress concentration factors. Now, we already know the fatigue damage is highly stress cycle dependent. Which need to be considered in the SN curve. So, we know that this is given by minus L. <coughs> but for marine structures, the fatigue damage should be augmented along with the stress concentration factors at the joints. When the crack growth is sharp at the notches, which is not the part of the structural geometry then stresses may show infinite enhancement. Therefore, the SN curve approach will not be satisfactory. In case of tubular joints, the stress concentration <coughs> effects has no reference in a sun curve. So, in the quotes, this problem is handled indirectly by considering the stresses as two adjacent points. In tubular joints,
fatigue is dominated by the stresses perpendicular to the weld so that other components need not be considered. When you talk about design of marine structures, there are two aspects in this. One is the stress concentration, the other is fatigue. Interestingly, both of them independently. does not dictate the design ok. It is only the joint effect, it is the joint effect which will control the design. The stress concentration describes the condition at which the local stress are produced. as a result of the geometry, whereas the fatigue damage occurs at normal stress levels. lower than the yield value. This is true, I will write it here. This is true when The stresses are high in the local areas, so it is a combination of these two which governs the design of the marine structures. So, it propagates perpendicular to the direction of applied maximum tensile stress towards the areas of low local stresses that is how the fatigue damage occurs. See the stress concentration is talking at a point where the local stress are produced to be the maximum resulting from the geometry because of the connection. Whereas, the fatigue damage addresses 
the stresses at points where they are very high the local and keep on propagating from that point in the direction perpendicular to the direction of tensile stress to the stress of local low local areas. So, neither of them independently govern the design. So, it is together the joint effect of these two will govern the design. So, this is what is identified as hot spots I will remove this. Let us say mark these points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. <coughs> so, hot spots are location in the tubular joints <coughs> where the maximum applied tensile stress occurs. So, the stress history at hot spots are necessary for fatigue damage this is important. Now, in the hot spots three basic stresses will contribute. to the hot spot development. They are called as primary which I can call as type A these stress are caused by axial force and moments for example the points 1 3 4 and 6 are affected by axial force and plane bending moment in the braces these are the points 1 3 4 and 6. Regions 2 and 5 are most affected by regions 2 and 5 are most affected by axial force 
and circumferential moment in the braces. These are what we call as type A or primary stresses. The second is called secondary stresses or type B which are caused by the structural details of the connections. Namely, poor joint geometry poor fit up local variation in stiffness this is very important this can occur due to two rigid reinforcement. Reinforcement in means here it is not the reinforcement using steel, weld ok, very strong welding can result in variation in stiffness that can also cause to development of hot spot stresses. Restraint in basis. caused by circumferential welds. The third could be type C stresses which are also called as secondary which are stresses caused by metallurgical factors. like faulty welding pattern, insufficient weld penetration undercutting heavy beading weld porosity and varying cooling rates except The type C stresses predominates hot spot location one comma three and four. These are the joints where this is predominantly seen. Now, interestingly, when the hot spot stresses are handled in the design, in the design, when the hot spot stresses are handled, how are they handled? By providing one solution is by providing heavy wall can 
other is by providing suitable reinforcement. What is the hot spot stresses? So, both of these can handle the punching shear field of the braces. Once this is handled, the focus will be towards the fatigue damage. That is why the fatigue damage becomes important for tubular joints because there are methods to handle the punching shear failure etcetera by adopting certain design parameters. So, ultimately now the failure focus will be towards or the design focus will be towards fatigue damage estimates. So, therefore, a family of S n curves that are used for tubular joints should be available. What does it mean? There should be large number of experiments conducted on samples of tubular joints to prepare SN curves for predicting their behavior under combination of stresses. What do you mean by combination of stresses? Combination of type A, B and C. Now, these curves are given by American Welding Society. which we call A W S since 1972, these curves are available. So, lastly if you look at the loading cycles which are applicable to these joints because fatigue damage predominantly dependent on stress cycles as we saw. So, if you look at the number of loading cycles of a tubular connection they can be divided into three ranges. One low cycle high stress range, okay, low cycle high stress range. This extends for a very low cycle of 1 into 10 power 4. In this range, hot spot stresses are very important. Because it is high stress range. Stresses due to elastic deformations are not important in this range. Next range is what we call intermediate range or intermediate region. There are three 
regions. Here the stress cycle ranges from 2 10 power 6 to 10 power 4. I will remove this. Most of the data of the SN curve are available for this range. Ten power four to two ten power six. The third region is the low stress high cycle region, which has got a very limited data because the cycles are higher than 2 into 10 power 6 ok large cycles higher cycles higher cycles but low stress ranges. But if you look at the statistics marine structures which are designed for a 20 years life generally encounter cycles of stresses as high as 1 into 10 power 8. This is because of the due to wave loading during the period. The period means design period. So, I am talking about 20 years life period. So, they are subjected to very high cycles. So, unfortunately for very high cycles of this range S n curve family is not available. Okay? This is actually the main reason why the fatigue limit stresses, the fatigue limit stresses are not specified for marine structures. This is the main reason because marine structures subjected to very high stress cycles. Okay. For these high stress cycles S n curve family is not available. Lastly, at high cycles let us quickly see what happens to the SN curve. The SN curve actually drops is very important. This is mainly due to imperfections corrosive environment presence of notches now due to these imperfections and in the design life the structures are subjected to high stress cycles where S n curves family is not available, codes do not specify fatigue limit stresses for marine structures. So, fatigue damage estimate will always be done for a cycle more or less less than 2 10 power 6, wherein S n curves are available. But in reality for a period of let us say 15 20 years lifetime of a marine structure the cycles are very high. Added to it it is seen in the literature that the S n curve actually drops. Okay. There is a kink in the S n curve for larger cycles. 
therefore the predict life prediction which you do for marine structures for this large cycle of life or for this larger life of 20 years under the wave loading where the direction or the amplitude or the stresses are affected by the waves are reversed very frequently the fatigue damage estimates cannot predict the fatigue life correctly okay. that is one of the important drawback what we have in the fatigue based design approach applied to marine structures. Okay. So, we conclude the lectures what we have in the advanced marine structures we quickly and briefly tell you what we have seen in few minutes. The course was divided in four modules 1, 2, 3 and 4 in the first module we we'll talk, talk about the design parameters and the limit states and the plastic design theories of failure we understood how the failure can happen even if the stress limit does not reach the yield value what are the discrepancies and we also analyzed how you can handle the impact loads coming on structures because of marine vessels. In module 2 we talked about the structural response aspects of flow induced vibration or flow through perforations what are the design techniques by providing streaks in spar platforms etcetera how we can handle the vortex induced vibrations or the secondary vibrations caused by these kind of flow interferences. In a structural engineering perspective not an hydrodynamic perspective we discussed that in detail we showed you analytical experimental and numerical studies carried out on perforated members which is one of the upcoming method of retrofitting a rehabilitation of marine structures. In the third module we will discuss about one important aspect of reliability because reliability circumscribing is probability, probability is associated with the characteristic values in the design as we saw in the first module. Therefore, we handle this level of reliability by reliability index and saw how what are the different stages and levels of reliability. We looked in detail what are the different types, kinds and methods of uncertainties, how are they handled in reliability theory and how do we do a reliability process of using FOSM and AFOSM using hassafer lean method where we can approximately find out the reliability index of a given marine structural system with a given data. In the last morning we discussed about the fatigue damage, how to predict the fatigue damage for marine structures when we talk about time series where we use rain flow counting technique, when you talk about the spectral fatigue damage where we use narrow band and broadband spectrums and how broadband spectrum can be converted equivalent to narrow band spectrum and we found out effective fatigue stress range sigma EFR which is a single amplitude stress value where we can find the fatigue life as well as the fatigue damage and we have applied certain correction factors based upon the variation parameters like beta suggested by different researchers we applied them to correct them. We have also seen if you want to use directly the broadband using rain flow counting technique I can still find the probability density function of the stress range by applying directly onto the broadband and find out the fatigue damage. As a summary we discussed this and we also saw how hot spots are developed, what are the parameters such as important contributing to the hot spot development and how the hot spot gets connected to the fatigue damage because in the design neither hot spot or stress concentration factor nor the fatigue life is important when they are acting independently because they behave in a different manner. But when they are joined together then the problem governs the design of marine structures, but when you look at the, uh, the cycle high cycle and low stress ranges which are applied to marine structures you will see that the marine structures in the given design service life are about 10 power 8 cycles for which the S n curve family is limited. Okay. So, the fatigue prediction or fatigue life prediction based on S n curves available in the AWS or other equivalent curves is not sufficient enough to exactly and accurately predict the fatigue life or the fatigue damage whether you use narrow band or broad band or time series calculation using rain flow counting method. So, with this we conclude all the four module lectures of advanced marine structures you will also find some of the important points of discussion as question papers and tutorials available in the website of NPTEL IIT Madras you are always happy and you can always free feel free to contact me if you have got any difficulties and doubts you can write to IITM NPTEL IIT Madras we will try to reply to queries and I sincerely request that you must go through all the modules repeatedly and try to understand them. I again urge that certain parameters which we explained here the certain empirical relationships may have errors please see the original references what I quoted and correct them. If you find any corrections please let me know thank you very much.